another uh, area of concern uh we we know it, at least what you know she has said what gypsy has said that uh, dd did to her and it, we're pretty much taking it as gospel it seems of you know this is is her experience and what happened and uh, there's not a lot of reasons to, to disbelieve but there had been several moments in that uh, documentary where a statement was made by gypsy and other family members then heard it and they were kind of dumbfounded or or in like i never heard that one before or almost kind of going yeah you know and i'm again i'm paraphrasing and it's just kind of you know adjusting and, and maybe some things are off um one of those things uh that i found interesting and, and it's it's troubling me because I, I don't know what to believe or what not to believe i think everyone kind of feels that way uh was the allegations of sexual abuse from her grandfather her grandfather has been participating in these documentaries uh the first round uh and and this next one um i don't know i I, I, if the allegation was out there you thought that 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 there could even be some sort of inkling of it even if it's false uh but you are kind of like well they're not quite right and they, they may conjure something up here I don't think he'd want to be participating in this sort of thing, but he he did seem kind of surprised, at least. Uh, wh what was your take on his reaction when they brought those allegations up to him? That was absolutely fascinating. And I would have expected a more intensely shocked reaction and absolutely not, I would never do that. And, you know, more of a strong argument when mm -hmm. that was brought up. He had a the thing that hit me was his quick flip to, oh, no, she tried to touch me, mm -hmm. and I had to tell her not to do that. I can't tell you how many pedophiles I have interviewed, and almost all of them, dozens, almost all of them will say it was the child. Boy, there are a lot of seductive four- and five-year-old girls running around out there because that is just kind of yeah. a standard pedophile line. One was we were playing games. I would never hurt her. Okay, games, a little bit sexual games here, but but it was this thing of the child caused it or yeah. the child started it. And he went there. He went mm -hmm. there really quickly. It was sort of like when they first brought this up and he said, oh, no, never but the you know expression was flatter than yeah. I would have expected. And then he very quickly pivoted to, well, she's the one that was trying to touch me. So that was another red flag for me that left me concerned. So my gut at this point would tend to believe her on that. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it makes you wonder, was this this kind of a culture that she was growing up in? of very very toxic people beyond just dd Dee Dee, yeah. that that were yeah. abusing her mentally physically um you know one would have to assume you know the way dd Dee Dee was uh, that there i mean there's a recipe for her too i mean how did she exactly. get to be the way that that exactly. she was um, yeah yeah i think multi-generational dysfunction with those folks none of them frankly seem normal yeah. in in different ways but you know dd Dee Dee is clearly so bizarrely pathological and and sadistic in certain ways that's obvious but yes what produced her and the reaction of what was another thing that grandpa said take her ashes after the cremation and dump them down the toilet mm -hmm. okay you know, I can see having a variety of mixed feelings, but that again, that's kind of out of the norm of what most people would think of. Yeah, for a family that is completely out of the norm, no matter yeah. what angle you look at it. Uh, yeah. For someone like Gypsy, you know, to to reacclimate or to acclimate, I don't even say reacclimate because there was never any acclimating to the world uh, in any sort of healthy way at 32, 33. I forget what her exact age is right now, but. Uh, those childhood years are gone. I mean, even if she were to go and, and stay with mom and dad, it, it's it's a different place in time, a different where place where she's at in terms of brain development and maturity. Uh, what kind of path should Gypsy be on realistically if she does want to live a normal life, like she said, just be out there to, to have a job, to do the things uh, of, of you know, just kind of a, a normal life outside of the spotlight? 
Yeah, if I could design an ideal, let's say, transitional program for Gypsy, it, it would be that. It would look at, rather than moving from prison life, now you're a, a housewife trying to get pregnant and have a family, you know, which is apparently the plan. They want to have a family. Um, I would think a transitional living situation where she has daily therapy, where she perhaps lives with, you know, in a group home kind of setting with other roommates, but there's a lot of supervision there. And then maybe have a few years of going to community college or vocational training so that she can start to feel like, oh, I really have some skills as a competent adult. And so you would have perhaps staff in this transitional living group home facility kind of functioning as parents for her. Mm -hmm. I think that would be ideal. And then learning how to date. You know, you don't have to get engaged the second time you meet someone. But there's so much internal work that needs to happen to help her learn what reality is and how to develop skills. And moving into this marriage and trying to start her own family, that's not going to be the ideal path. I would think at some point, developmentally, she's going to want to try dating. And I think that was one of the concerns that was mentioned in one of the documentaries before she married Ryan was, well, maybe I'm not ready because I might want to date other people. That sounded grounded in reality, you know, yeah. and so, you know, marriages, we have a high divorce rate anyway, but I wouldn't bet on this one lasting. So I hope yeah. they don't have kids right away. I, 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 I hope the same. I mean, obviously you want happiness for people, but you also, you know, when you talk about bringing another human into the world, it's best if that person who's bringing them in is remotely qualified to raise them. Uh, th that's that's how these patterns start. That's how these patterns exactly. continue. Uh, and that's Gypsy's in the middle of it right now. If she does, does decide to go down that road and let's have kids, um, I, uh, the odds of that child having a healthy, normal upbringing that will not repeat some sort of destructive pattern, I imagine, are very low. Yeah, yeah. It, it's It's you know, tragic. It's just tragic. So yeah, fingers crossed that they take their time. And if it's going to fall apart and go south, that that happens fairly quickly. And then can she move into a more functional situation? And I don't know what the odds of that are. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know that going and living with her dad and stepmother would, how that would actually work out. I think there would be challenges there, but I, I do think some kind of supervised transitional therapy program mm -hmm. would probably be best for her. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.